This is The Lay Witness with host Dwayne Lynch and music by Jim Fullinga. The Lay Witness is a program about people and their day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. Okay, Harold and Janie Humphreys, bless your heart. I tell you, I just want to hear what's going on in your life and, and today what Jesus is doing in your life. But uh, to come back, just to, let's go just a little bit further back to a, a day whenever you really met the living Christ, uh, Brother Harold, and bring us up to date here just a little bit, if you will. We'll visit some. That happened some time ago. Actually, I was 38 years old and uh, had been looking for something. I didn't know what. I'd had an awful lot of things and knew an awful lot of people, but there was still something missing. I didn't know what it was, Dwayne. So I was looking for reality, whatever that might be. And I searched for about three years. And Jane and I talked about it a great deal, that there was something that was missing that seemed to be important. And we were looking for that, both of us. And I think it came about through the search, really, because I had come out of a home that uh, was as perfect a home as, as, as a home could be. I had everything I needed, plus wonderful parents. And so there was nothing missing as far as that was concerned, as the physical or the material thing. But it was the spiritual, but I didn't know that because I'd never been uh, to a point to where I could understand the difference between the spiritual and the physical. But at least I was hungry, and I, I came into this by meeting a group of people who were filled with the joy of the Lord. And it was so noticeable that I wanted what they had. Now, I didn't know what they had, but I wanted it. It was contagious. And so I began to seek them out to find out what it was that made them different from what I was. Inwardly, uh, I was not happy. Outwardly, I suppose I looked happy, maybe. I don't know. But at any rate, they told me it was Jesus. But they didn't tell me how to, to, how to find him, you see. So a matter of three weeks after this happened to me, a layman and his wife shared with me how to receive Jesus Christ. Mind you, I had been church affiliated all these years and very active, but I had never really made that commitment of my life to Jesus Christ. I didn't know how. I had joined church. But I really didn't know how to give myself to him. And so this is when it happened. On a Sunday afternoon in the living room of a home, I literally gave my life and everything that went with it to Jesus Christ. And nothing's been the same since. It's been a tremendous experience. Your walk has been for with the Lord in a number, for quite a number of years now, hasn't it? When that happened in 1952, and I was serious about it because it made such a dramatic change in my life. I knew somebody had come to live in this old house. I knew it. And I wanted to find out more. And I really didn't know who to go to to talk about it because the people who had shared with me were from Oklahoma City. And they went back to Oklahoma City and left this baby kind of alone. Well, you don't go to your preacher and say, hey, I'm a new Christian. You know, because you want him to think you've been a Christian all along. So it took me a long time to go to my pastor and share with him. I did go to the altar of the church, recommit my life to Christ, and uh, really made a commitment. It wasn't the first time commitment, but it was the first time from my heart that I really knew what I was doing. You got it out of your head and into your heart. I got it out of my head and into my heart. Right. It made a big difference. You know, I've, I have a friend, and I've used this uh, many times before, uh, they say, uh, you know, going to church doesn't make you a Christian anymore, and going to a chicken house makes you a chicken. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you got out of church, didn't you, That's so right. to speak. And you got out of the house and got into Jesus. And, uh, and God's blessed your life uh -huh. ever since. Uh, you know, Harold, if I, if I may, I, uh, because I've known you, I've just had a deep, uh, oh, it seems like that there's something, let me, let me say it this way. You kind of remind me of old Solomon or something. You're, you're rich. You're rich to talk to. Uh, because God has matured you in a very special way, and uh, and how did he how did he do this? Only I, of course a lot of testing I know, but how did he? Uh, you have that sweet peace that comes after a certain period of time. How I think the first thing that happened was the fact that uh, we sought Christian fellowship immediately. Uh, 
There was something about Christian fellowship that was sweet. It was different from the kind of fellowship that I'd had before. Uh, not that I didn't love my friends as much as I ever did, but this was a new dimension of life that I wanted to explore, and I wanted to explore it with people. So we began immediately to involve ourselves in uh, Bible study groups, share groups, and uh, got to work in the church for the first time and began to work with young people. And I think the Lord touched our hearts to share with these young people that there is a dimension of life that uh, you ought not to miss while you're young because That's this right. is when it's That's best, right. when you can give it your all, you know. And I think it was through this, uh, this sharing with these young people uh, and to find that they were so smart that you couldn't just share any sort of an answer with them and expect them to take it. So this, this put us in the book. Mm -hmm. In the book. And we had to get in the book. We had to get in that Bible to begin to get some answers for our own life before we could share them with the youth. And this is, this is where our growth has come. You know, isn't it funny that there was just one basic little diagram that I remember? You know, and I said, you know, how do I keep whatever it is, you know, so to speak? And I'm like you, I, I just met Jesus and didn't know what to call him, you know, so to speak, other than I met him through a commitment. As, uh, you know, when, we, when it becomes a religion, uh, that's rather dull. But when it becomes a relationship, we've tapped into eternal resources. And it gets exciting. Now, how do you keep this? You mentioned Bible study, prayer, fellowship. You mentioned your fellowship. And witnessing. And... Uh, and that's, what, that's how you've grown. I'll, I'll come back to you in just a minute. I want to talk to Mama. Okay. Janie, you're lovely. Just beautiful. Thank just you. beautiful. Tell me about your life. Well, it's wonderful to have a spiritual leader in your home because I think a mother and a wife become involved. And it might not be as easy for a woman, but with the spiritual leader in your house, which is to be, it has made it so beautiful. But Harold has taken over that, as God had asked him to. We were both leaders before we came in, but we were the blind leading the blind. <laughs> and we really didn't know where we were going. But I was very happy because I had always felt that I had known Jesus all my life. Because I knew, I just, I just knew him. But I really didn't know him. And uh, I just thank God that that he touched me Amen. at the same time that he touched Harold. And our life is so entwined that it's hard for one to share without sharing the other's testimony. But um, the main thing that I think that God has so graciously given me is love. Oh, yeah. And he has let me love while Harold has taught. I call myself the tag along. That's my CD handle. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> because wherever he goes, I tag along. Uh -huh. oh, and uh, so when I talk on the CD, if I'm by myself, I'm just tag along, even if he's not there, which is very seldom. But uh, he is just, Harold teaches, and I just pray. <laughs> and I guess that all I do that amounts to anything is my personal prayer life and love. But God has given me such love. And I don't mean that, that everyone does not have this. But we have worked with youth. And you know, you do run across some. They're not too lovable. are unlovable. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it seems that sometimes those ones that he has graciously given me the love, more love for, the little truck driver, or the little cowboy, are the ones that do not have the fellowship. And so I, all I can just say is that, that I have just, all of this is just through the grace of God, and I, I really haven't earned or deserved or any of it. Isn't that wonderful? It's yes. great. You know, Jenny, if I may take this in a different direction, you know, I, every time I would always interview people before in the program, it seemed like that God would have something he wanted to raise up. And you, you two have, uh, have brought to light something, and I know that there are people that are watching right now that uh, whose marriage has got troubles and they can't really find the solution and, and it's beautiful to see uh, you know when a man and wife are joined in the spirit the spirit will not war with himself and so therefore there's no real ego conflict and uh, it's 
it's good, isn't it, that, that we can come together and know each other spiritually. A yeah, man and wife, we know each other so physically, but never, never touch each other spiritually. And that's part of God's perfect plan. And uh, what do you have to say? Add something to that. I know you got something. Well, you we got about two back, or three minutes. You often look back and wonder what your life would be now, or if you'd even still be together. Because there's trials and tribulations, and when you have to go through them alone, sometimes you don't make them. But through, you can do all things through Christ, but by praying together is one of the greatest things a man and wife can do. Just get out and pray. Right. right. Well, and I think one of the beautiful things that the discovery that we made so early was that uh, we didn't feel that we must do this, but we wanted to give one another spiritual freedom. Um, Jane was free to pursue the Lord in any way that she wanted to, and I had that same freedom. Now, new Christians will pursue the Lord in lots of different ways, i found, uh, because it's just like a hunger man looking for bread. That's right. And once he gets a taste of the bread, he'll just, he just goes wild, you know, and, and you're liable to go in any direction hunting this bread of life. And if, if a husband doesn't give his wife the freedom to, to search in her own way and have that same freedom, then there's no real unity. And we had this from the very beginning. And I think that's one of the greatest things in our marriage you know, is I'm the fact that we were free. Right. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Amen. And you see, this is the way we've attained our spiritual oneness. Beautiful. No demands on either one. Just letting God be God that's in your right. life. Isn't mm -hmm. that beautiful? <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, what I want to do right now, let's, uh, let's pray. I've got some, after we pray, I've got some things I want to share with the people. Okay. But, uh, I just, if you all would just join me right here, just right here, and, uh, and I just want to pray. I just know that, Lord, there's somebody that's watching this program right now that's got problems in their home, and I just feel like, again, that it's, uh, it's that man that can't break the shell of pride that separates him and the true love that only the Father can give him in order to, to line things up in the home the way they ought to be. And Father, I just pray that you just bless that family right now that's reaching out, that husband that's touching the hand of that wife in his own sweet way and saying, I want to come under the, the lordship of Jesus and let our home uh, be uh, under uh, the Father. And I, Father, I praise you. I thank you for these precious people that have come to uh, share their witness. And I just thank you, Lord, for, for Jimmy, that he's here with me. And every week he'll be sharing the love of Jesus in song. We praise you for this opportunity to serve in Jesus' precious name.